What's going on guys? This is Kazi. Welcome to another epic episode under the color grading made easy series. This is the show where we take same clip and create different looks. Okay. So this time we're going to be going by different parts of the world. So um, we're going to create a really warm look and we're going to create a very cold look depending on the region that it belongs to. So before we even jump into that, let's take a second and talk about when we hear the phrase telling stories through the art of color, what does that really mean? When we see saturated colors, we associate happiness and holiday season with that. When we see dull colors, we associate either horror or sadness, desolation, things like that. Same thing goes with when it comes to different regions or different parts of the world. When we think of Middle East, we think of hot weather and then that is associated with super warm looks. These color palettes have been around for decades. Think of Estoraro, how he used color back in when we didn't even know that color grading was a thing. So as a colorist, it's very helpful when you understand not only telling a story through different eras and different genres, but also understanding what a specific look is by region. And for those that want to level up their color grading game, check out the link in the description. One hour long free training where I will show you how to get the perfect skin tones out of your Sony S-Log 8-bit footage, how to get the clean white look. It's the go-to commercial look. How to get the creamy film look. How to fix the dreaded gamma shift and much, much more. Link is in the description. If you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. Let's roll the intro. All right, let's do this thing. So first of all, let's start off with our no tree, just as we always do. And then we're going to deep dive, start with our Mexico slash Middle East look, and then we're going to move on to our Eastern European look. Okay, so first note is going to be my temp and tint. Then I'm going to create a new serial, and this one is going to be my primaries. I'm going to create another serial. This is going to be my LUT. I'm going to create another serial. This is going to be my look adjustment. And then finally, we're going to have our grain. So this is pretty simple. Okay. If you really bring this down, because this is our finishing node, we are creating this look by using only four nodes. And then we're going to start off with our third node. Let's go under LUTs and film looks, which are available for free with DaVinci Resolve Studio or free version. I'm going to select the warmer version of the 2383 D55, drop that on. And at first, it looks not the same, right? If I click on here and bring this image in, they don't look anything uh, alike at all, right? So that's totally fine. First of all, let's analyze this. What do we see? Look at the scopes, how red dominant this is. Then we got greens and blues are kind of compressed. Also, if we look at the contrast on the low end, it's a pretty opened up image. It's not really pushed or really tight. Like there's a lot of breathing room. So let's keep that in mind when we build it. And again, like I said, we're not going for a one-to-one -one match. This is going to be this similar vibe, but it has to be realistic to our environment. Okay. So I'm not going to pixel peep the sky and every single thing, the floor, you'll figure out what I'm talking about. So let's go under our primaries. I'm going to raise my gamma. I'm going to bring my gain down to open up my image. Gamma up, gain down. All of a sudden, we start to see their face and stuff like that. So maybe keep the image somewhere around here. Somewhere around here. So this is not bad. Now I'm going to... Let's see what I can do with my lift. So let's bring the lift down a little bit. But then gamma up, lift down. So we still have some nice black points. So maybe somewhere around here. And let's take our saturation and crank it all the way. So we have some color separation going on, okay? Again, we can see that there is, you know, color separation, although everything is sitting on that red side, even if you look at the leaves, like they're sort of sepia, you know? So we are going to keep that in mind. Now I'm going to go under my temp and tint, and let's start juicing it up, okay? So obviously, always go too far, and then see what's working, what's not working, 
and then pull it back. So I'm going to go somewhere around here. I'm going to take my tint and I'm going to add some green. And if I just kind of vibe it out, if I just put these next to each other and look at it and kind of, you know, squint my eyes, I think we've got a good thing going on, but we might be too uh, much on the nose with the saturation. So I'm going to dial it back a little bit. Not too much, just something like that. Now go back here, grab my tint and add more green. And then let's see what we can do with my temp. So this is what I'm talking about, right? Like, I mean, if we really feel them out, it's getting pretty close. Now I'm going to go under my look adjustment. I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to take my editable splines, make sure that editable splines is checked on. I'm going to click right here and uh, lift this up a little bit, not too much, something like that. And once again, I do want to open my image up a little bit more. So gamma up, gain down, gain up first and then gain down. Where do we want to keep it? I want a lot of the meat in my image. So something like that. Now, if I turn it on and off, this node is making all the difference. Okay. And if I go before and after between these, we are really getting those colors in. Now we see that there's a lot of red that we get to see greens, all that stuff. Whereas if I do complete before, there weren't a lot of colors to begin with here. So we're not going to be seeing a lot of that. Okay. I can again, go under my saturation and kind of crank it to 100% and see that it doesn't really make that big of a difference. So if I do before and after, I can just split the difference, bring it back to like 93-ish, okay, something like that. And now if I look at the two, so let's take all of this, kill it and start off uh, from the top. But before we do that, let's go into our grain and uh, drop in our film grain. I'm going to go in and under my presets, I'm going to pick up 35 millimeter 400 T, which is my favorite. I'm going to take my grain size, crank it, especially for the web. So we can see the difference that I'm making because I'm going to show you something and it's going to blow your mind. So if I really get close here, okay, if I bring in my reference, look at the amount of grain that we have in Spectre James Bond. Look at this grain. So that's why I'm pushing it quite a bit. So now if I do before, if I do after, you can get to see what I'm doing, okay? I'm really trying to match that, get there. So let's kill everything and then go node by node and see where we started to where we ended up. So this is what we have. We start off with our LUT. It looks nothing alike. Then we go in in our primaries. We open up our image quite a bit by massaging it. Then we go under temp and tint, sim simple controls to like really dial in that look. We go into our look adjustment to give it a little bit of pop. This one is take it or leave it, okay? Because I just feel like this might add a little bit too much of a pop. So another thing that I can do is just grab it from here and like kind of restrict it to like where it's adding that pop. And now if I do before and after, actually I liked it before. And then finally we added grain to really bring it home. And even if we look at the scope, right? Like look at how the scopes look here. So look at how the scopes look here. So we're very similar in that regard. And this is where I'm gonna leave it. Again, like I said, it's not one-to-one. -one. I just want to put ourselves in that world where we started to where we ended up. So this is the first look. Now let's move into our Eastern European look. So the first thing we're going to do to accomplish our second look is reset our temp and tint and leave everything as is because as a colorist, you want to be as efficient as possible. Okay. So now I'm going to bring in my reference. This is what it is. Look at the scopes and this is what we got. So what can we do? Let's start with temp and tint. Let's, let's cool it off quite a bit and then obviously bring it back. Let's put it somewhere around here. Let's take my tint and go all the way and then kind of bring it back and let's see what we're doing. So obviously we're going really far. So now I'm going to take my temp and tint and kind of split the difference, bring it back. And uh, now I'm going to go under my saturation here and kind of dial it back. 
Now go back in temp and tint and see how I'm vibing. Let, let's just look at it and kind of feel it out. I'm gonna go a little bit more. And this to me, again, I want to create a similar look, but in my world. I, would, I don't want to go in their world. I want to still be inside my own world. One more thing that I can try is uh, try to open up the image a little bit more since this is sort of like a vintage look. Um, let's see if we can do that. So gamma up, gain down. Gamma up, gain down. So maybe keep the gain somewhere around here. Now let's go under our look adjustment and see if this is helping us or hurting us because here it is kind of, um, the image is not super contrasty, right? So I think I'm going to kill this. I'm going to go under my grain. The grain is also not as pushed. So I'm just going to like really dial this back. I'm going to go somewhere around here with my grain. And now it's looking much better. And um, if I were to just kind of do a swipe and get a feel for it, right? Like where we were to where we are. Um, it is looking better. We do see a lot of green in her hair, which means we can go back in our temp and tint and try to add that. So I'm going to bring in some of that green. Obviously, I'm going to push it too far. Then I'm going to bring it back. And then I'm looking at the floors and like, how far can I push it there? I mean, we're creating a pretty highly stylized look, right? So, I mean, this is bound to happen where it just looks like, is it wrong? Like, are we going too far with this? But that's just what's happening, right? We're going for this extreme look. And uh, one thing that we can do is under my look adjustment, I can reset that. And then what I can do is I can go under my vector, soften it up quite a bit, hit shift H so I can see my highlights and just really control the top end and now go back here and see what I want to do with it. So I can go take my gain and start bringing in some of that, uh, this green that we see here. So not too much because again, I do want to keep it realistic to what I'm creating. But even if I do this before and after, it really does bring me closer to this world. I'm not going to do anything more than that. Look at this to that compared to this. And uh, this is what I meant by really getting there. Like, look at the scopes now, right? This was before and this is after. And then this is our atomic blonde. And then this is us. So we are getting very close to that vibe. And um, it's highly stylized. I'm not um, denying that. And uh, this is... This would be something where I would kind of just leave it. One more thing that we can do is uh, I will create a parallel node and uh, try to see if we can start pulling in some of these colors back in, right? So what can we do? I can take my lift and raise it up to kind of see what I'm doing. Like, look at this to that. Like I'm bringing some of this back if i do before and after you get to see it right like i'm bringing some of that magenta back in and we can even see that there like back there so i'm trying to bring some of that in and uh then we can counter it with my log wheels and kind of bring it down and uh clean them up so my log wheels i'm gonna try to clean them up something like that pull it down and then I'm going to use my low range to like really control that. So let's keep it somewhere around here. So if I do before and after, we made quite a difference in this particular note. Okay. This was before something was off and then we did this and look how we're getting this color back in here. So a little change, like look at the blacks right here to right here. Our blacks might be a bit more sharp which is okay. Like I said, ne was never going for a one-to-one -one match. But even if we look at in the back right there, how much of these colors, like this right there that we're bringing in. So this particular node made quite a difference. Now all I can do is uh, go back in here and see if I want to bring back a little bit more of this. So I'm going to do this. And 
be mindful of like how much of that change I'm making. So look at my scopes right here to like where they're ending up now. And to me, this is the most realistic version of recreating that Eastern European look. And then this is where I would park it. Okay, never meant to do one to one match, but still wanted to get a lot of tonalities out and get in that zone. Okay, so I'm going to grab all of this. Let's kill it. Start with a LUT, then did our primaries, did our temp and tint, and then here grabbed the sky and just really brought it in that world. But at this point, it was looking just sort of like a tint on an entire image. So then this really leveled everything out and brought back a lot of the colors in the back and all of that. And then added grain, but controlled our grain quite a bit. And then this is our final look. So just look at the difference. This is what we created for our Eastern European look. And then this is what we had for our Mexico or Middle East look. Let's check out these looks in full screen. So hopefully this gives you an idea of genuinely the power of color grading and how quickly we can just take the same shot and create completely different looks. Guys, if you're enjoying the content, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel. Do not forget to check out the training. Link is in the description. It's 100% free. One hour long training that's going to take you from not knowing anything about Resolve to grading your first professional gig. On that note, I will see you in the next video.